Okay, so we have finished our flat coloring, but now we're going to start, I created a new layer above my flat color, and we're gonna cut out some highlights, just white hi highlights. Now, cutting them out makes it sound like I'm gonna erase, but that's not true. So instead, I've outlined them with my lasso, and I can keep on doing that. Sometimes they nest right up against the black line work. But even if I don't draw these shapes perfectly, it's okay. Sometimes it'll just be tiny little drops within other drops. And unfortunately, my illustration just has a lot of them. But this is all kind of special effects stuff, making the colors pop a little bit more. So let me fill these in just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now I just will go to Edit Fill, and I'm just going to color them 100% white, right? And then deselect. So that's all on this new highlights layer. I think I can safely do some more. And then I'll show you kind of what options that gives us. Right now, this is all very clean cut edge, but you'll notice that my lasso edge is not as clean as my vector edge. And that's okay, this is just the coloring. So I use my lasso, draw some more highlights. as I hold down shift so I can add to them. As I'm getting, um, as I'm working on it, I'm getting kind of more and more introduced to my illustration. And I am not using any particular light logic here. I'm basically trying to figure out what would look good. That's the ultimate light logic of an illustrator, what would look good. But sometimes you'll develop a particular light source. You'll use that. And because it's on its own layer, it's okay to overdo it because it's easy to erase. And I'm trying to make them fairly irregular shapes. So it looks like kind of blobs of water. And I can even add that into the text a little bit. Now, once you get beyond flat color, the different coloring, um, digital coloring types vary. And you have a bunch of options then. So we're gonna learn to recognize the different options in order to be informed about what decisions we make. But it all has to do with taking that local color that we found, that we used, and splitting it into variations of that local color. And the most basic is called duotone color. And the most basic of duotone color is what's called cut edge or hard edge duotone color, where you just make a, a highlight version and a shadow version of your local color. And it's called cut edge or hard edge because that's all that there is. There's no um, gradation between them, you, you just have the two shapes right next to each other. So that's what this lemon is like. That's duotone hard edge color. You have the highlight right next to the shadow. The other version is to do a gradation or a soft edge, where you work between those different tones. And one's just more graphic than the other. In animation, it's called cell shading, the duotone cut edge. Okay, so this should get me started.
it's better to try new things than to be too precious about it. All right. So I just added a bunch of those whites. This is still flat color because white is not duotone, right? White and black, you can add as much as you like. It's not duotone. In the same manner, I can add a new layer and I can add what's called full bleed inking. So for instance, if, you're, if your vector line work is all outline, but you wanted something to be fully solid black, like maybe a dripping shape behind this tongue, then I can do that in full bleed inking. And then I can fill that, just like I filled the other layer with white, I can fill that with 100% black. And maybe I want a little bit more of that. Again, it's better to be experimental than precious. And by having these on different layers, we can always try new things. But these are not going to be as clean as the black outlines you used in your vector. Now, I don't even need to worry. Actually, I do a little bit. About how clean I am, I just want to stay behind the black outlines. I don't need to get the shapes perfect. I just need to get them behind the black outlines. These are just things I can show you that I want to play with. It might be nice to have a little bit of sh extra shadow in these weird areas. A lot of empty space. This is all raster, all pixel based. All right, so now I can get to the duotone coloring. So how do I do that? I make a duplicate of my, my favorite flat color layer. I move it up above any other flat color layers I'm using. I mark it green. And what I do first is I call this duotone shadows. There's lots of ways you can do this. You could just, just like I was do doing with highlights of black and white, you could add that with color selections, right? But this is the way I like to do duotone. These are going to be the shadow versions of these local colors. So I go to image adjustment and I go to levels and I simply darken the midtones. And those give me the shadow tones of my colors, of my flat colors. Then I take my lasso. This is for cut edge. And I kind of pick a light source. Again, that's kind of tricky with water. But I'm going to take kind of a big blob and delete. And you see that way I'm going to have shadow tones and light tones, shadow tones and light tones, until I start to get a sense of how it works with this cut edge. I'm trying to be kind of experimental, kind of random, kind of Santa Cruz skateboard sticker style. I like what that's doing to the tongue. You see those, all those different color variations all of a sudden. I wish I had more inside there, but I'll work with that. Now on the lettering, I'm thinking kind of like water bubbles. Command Z is your friend. All right. So now I have those as duotone shadows. Now I can do the same thing with my highlights. 
what I can do is I can select all the empty space, right? All the white unchecked contiguous from my duotone shadows layer, move that selection just to my flat colors, duplicate that. I'm going to call this my duotone highlights. Because you don't always want to just leave your flat color as your highlights. And I'm going to make that a color, just so I can see it clearly. Go ahead and put the black around it so it's clear. And on those highlights, now I'm going to go to Image Adjustment Levels, and I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to shift the midtones brighter. Simple enough. So that just kind of contrasted my image a little bit. Now that all works. And once I add my white highlights to that, that starts to look kind of exciting. Um, once I add my full bleed inking to that, that looks maybe even a little bit more interesting. But it needs to be kind of cleaned up and refined. And so what other options do I have? Well, I can always add more highlights. So if I decide there need to be some, but I'm going to do that on the right, on the appropriate layer. And then I can always do like particular coloring in any one place that I want at any time. So for instance, in my duotone shadows, maybe I want a shadow shape that kind of goes behind the eyes like this, kind of like a raccoon. I could go to my flat color layer. I can duplicate just that selection. And I can move it up. And I can play with its levels. Shift it darker, shift it lighter modify it, just different sections. And all of this is just using variations of your flat color. So this is all just duotone. Nothing more complicated than that. That along with some white highlights can go a long way in your artwork. But if I want to push it further, what if I start softening my color options? So you'll see here, after I added the white highlights, I didn't do cut edge color. I actually did soft edge duotone. And I like to do cut edge first, save the, the work, because it's so easy then to do all of this and just soften it with Gaussian blur. So this is my little trick. I'm going to take all my duotone layers here. I'm going to merge this one with this one, my duotone shadows. And I'm going to put them into a group. So duotone shadows and highlights I put into its own folder. Then I duplicate that whole folder, Command-J. And I'm going to call this Soft Edge Duotone, the one I just made. And I'm going to call the one underneath it cut edge duotone or hard edge duotone because that's what I'm looking at here. Now my soft edge duotone, I take that whole folder and I'm going to run a filter on it. First I'll do it on the, the highlights and I go to uh, filter blur, the only filter we use, the only tool we use consistently. And I'm going to blur those out a little bit. And then we're really going to see it when we do it to the shadows. Let's do it more extremely. Blur, Gaussian blur, 